In this video, I'm going to walk through landed costs. We're going to go into the inventory app, configuration settings, and we're going to ensure that we have landed costs enabled. So we'll scroll all the way down, and you do see that we have landed costs enabled. We have the default journal set as inventory valuation. Next thing I want to bring your attention to is our product categories. We're going to be using average cost. So we have our costing method as average cost. For landed costs, and in order to use landed costs, you need your inventory valuation to be automated with a costing method of either average cost or first in, first out. And in order to have this automated inventory valuation, you must have that counting application. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to our products and we're going to see example product one and example product two. They're both set up the same. Product category is AFCO. The cost price of product one is $5 and the cost price of product two, we'll set it to $10 and we'll have the sale price at 20. Next thing we want to look at is our weight and volume, we have it set to zero, but I'm just showing you where it's located because this is one of the methods on how we can apply our landed cost. Now, if I remove our filter, we see two other products, handling fee and shipping. They're both relatively the same. In order to create a landed cost, we want to, or landed cost product, we want to have the product type set to service. If we go to purchase, we'll see that is a landed cost is checked and we have a default split method. We didn't set a default, but I'm going to go over the different options. We have equal. So if you have 10 products on a receipt or an RFQ and you receive those products in and you have a landed cost of $100, it's going to apply $10 to each product regardless of the quantity of each product. And then by quantity, it will divvy up that $100 based on the number of units. So if you have 50 total units, each uh, dispersed between 10 products, we will divide the landed cost of $100 into those 50 units, so $2 for each unit. By current cost, so the higher the cost, the more of the landed cost that gets applied to that product. And then by weight and volume, so the same concept, concept as current cost, but for weight and volume. The higher the weight or volume, the more landed up cost it in, um, gets applied to it. Next thing we want to do is purchase our example one product and example two product. So I'll create a new purchase order. We'll do example one product and example two product, or just we'll order two of each and we'll confirm this order and we can receive those products in. Now the first way to apply a landed cost is to do so from the bill. So we have our purchase order. Now we want to create a bill and we can say that we received the bill and there's a shipping fee on there. So we can add a shipping fee and we'll say that the price was $10 for the shipping fee. So we'll confirm and now you'll see a button here. Well, let's first add a bill date and now you'll see a button here that says create landed cost. This essentially tells us to create a landed cost for this line item that we added on our invoice that is a landed cost product. So we can click create landed cost from right here and this will bring us to our inventory uh, land the cost page. Alternatively, we can do it from the inventory app itself. So I'll just click create land the cost and then I'll leave this and show you where it's located inside the inventory app. So I'll click inventory and we'll go to operations landed costs and then we'll create a new land cost or we'll go into our one that's a draft that we just created. So we'll go into the draft and now we can see there's several things we need to do. We need to apply a transfer to this. So the transfer is that record that when we received the products and that was warehouse in 005. 
So we'll apply 005 to get uh, this, to apply the landed cost to, and we can select multiple transfers if we'd like. We have our split method here. It's set to equal by default, or the first option is equal. We can do it by quantity, by current weight, by volume, etc. We can click this compute button to see what our evaluation adjustments are going to be. But we, we don't have to click this compute button. We can just validate and apply that automatically. But we'll click the compute button and see what our evaluation adjustments are. Product two, the original, or sorry, product one, the original value was $10. With this $10 shipping fee getting divided between the two products we have here, $5 got applied to example product one, and five products got applied to example product two. So we'll validate that and see what kind of effects it has. If we go to our smart button, the valuation, you'll see that these lambda costs have been applied to our products. If we go to reporting inventory valuation and we look at example product one, you'll see that we have the cost price that we bought the products for and then an additional cost price for $5. Now, if we go into our products, and we see we have example product one, example product two. Because we're using average cost, the price of the cost or the cost price gets updated on our product template based on us receiving the goods and the price we paid for them, as well as the landed cost being applied to these products. So because we have two items in stock, that $5 got divided between the two units that we purchased on that particular landing cost. So the average price for this product is $750. That's going to be the $10 plus the $5 of landing cost divided by two units on hand. And the same goes for product two. So now if we sell one of each of these, And we confirm. Well, we'll leave the invoice for now. We'll go to delivery and we'll validate this delivery. Now, if we go to inventory again and we look at our evaluation, inventory valuation, and we look at example one and example two, you see that. Now our total value is 750, so it took that average cost and subtracted uh, from our product template. So the average cost was 750 and we removed one item. So the average cost is 750 and now we're left with 750. The same goes for the 1250 on example product two. <clears throat> so now that's all completed. The next scenario we wanna look at is what happens if you prepay for a landed cost, so say maybe freight, um, you have to pay the freight bill ahead of time, you don't have any bills um, or anything associated with that yet. You can do that by simply creating a bill for that landed cost right from our vendor bills and accounting. We might add a landed cost here and say the shipping was maybe $100 that we had to pay ahead of time, likely to be larger sums. Maybe um, this is coming from overseas and you had to pay for some products. So we can save, we can confirm this, pay our bill, do all that. And then we can create the landed cost once we actually create the purchase order or uh, receive the items. So let's go in and create the purchase order. We'll say this time we're only gonna buy example product one. We'll buy 10 units and we'll confirm this order. Now we're gonna receive this products in. Before we receive it or after we receive it, depending on how you wanna do this, it doesn't really matter. We can go into our inventory app or from the accounting app on the bill, we'll just create a new landed cost and in inventory. And we'll say that's warehouse in. So we have not received those products in, so it's not going to let us apply that landed cost yet. 
So we'll go to our overview, one, the process. We see that warehouse in six. So these are only available once we receive the products, but sometimes you pay costs ahead of time. So we'll validate. Now we finally receive the products in. And I'm going to go to landed costs and create that landed cost for warehouse six, which now is going to be available. And we'll say this was the shipping fee. And we can add the vendor bill. So we'll delete that, save. And now we want to add that cost for the vendor bill. We can double check what that cost was. If we don't remember, it was $100. So we're going to add the cost $100. You can save and validate it. It'll update our products now. So if we go into look at our valuation adjustment, our new value is $150 for these 10 products. So that's got divided into each one of these products. And you'll see that $100 added cost here. If we go to our products again, we look at example product one, the total average cost now is $14.32. And again, that's all of the fees we inquired um, or incurred divided by the quantity that we've purchased, the total quantity purchased over time. So now if we sell, let's say, um, let's say we'll, we'll sell this product too. So then we have zero units. And now let's take a look at that product. The average cost, just to keep this in mind, is $12.50. Now let's, let's see what happens when we purchase a product. So we're going to purchase product two. And as you'll see, the price is set to $10 because that was the purchase price we have set for our vendor. So we can have different vendor prices and the cost price for the actual product can be different. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to update this to, let's say, we'll leave it at $10. It will decrease our average cost a little bit. We'll confirm the order. Receive those products in, and then we'll take a look at our product again. So we have example product two. The cost price now is... $10 because we have zero units and now the whole the the average cost for all of our units that we have on hand is $10. So the average cost again is based on the quantity we have divided by what we paid for it, or what we pay for it divided by the quantity that we have. So now what I want to do is sell this product and then add a landed cost after the fact. So we're going to go to sales, create, now we're going to confirm and sell that one product. Okay. So now we sold that one product. We look, we have zero units, for example, product two. But we can still apply landed cost to something that we already sold. So let's say that we went in here and two months later we got our freight bill. So we're going to add a new landed cost for that freight bill. We're going to apply to warehouse out. This was, I'm sorry, warehouse in number four or number seven. We're going to add a freight or handling fee. Let's say it's our freight bill or we'll just switch it to shipping and we'll say that this cost was a hundred. Let's just make it a weird number so we can remember 10150. We're gonna validate. And now 
if we look at our products, example product two, the cost price did not get updated and that's because we have zero units on hand. But if we go into our accounting app and we go to our journal items, you see that 101 was processed And you see for all of these products that we sold, the 101 was applied. So we sold those, those, uh, those products and you can see here that the one unit already left our warehouse and it even says already out. So we did keep track of that accurately. Um, it didn't really have an effect on our number on our product template, but it did get applied in accounting correctly. Now you can do the same thing with first in first out. Obviously it affects the product cost differently. So it won't affect our, it won't increase or decrease our product cost. But again, all of those accounting numbers will be accurate. And again, keep in mind that if you have a purchase price, it's not going to pull in your average cost. It's going to apply the cost that you have set for your vendor. And that's everything you need to know about landed costs in Odoo.